Here we create a function that will generate data frames. A data frame is a structure in R that uh, resembles a spreadsheet. And it is also the structure in R, structure of choice, that you use when you're processing data using various statistical mathematical functions, multivariate functions in particular, linear modeling and nonlinear modeling and mixed modeling and, and uh, approaches like that all use a data frame as input. In fact, many functions, many mathematical functions in R uh, use a data frame as input. So a data frame, it is actually a type of list structure, uh, but it is, uh, you could call it a restricted list. Now, the, re the requirements that I put on this assignment actually were a bit onerous. Um, you were, uh, the framework was this. It should accept an optional, optional number of arguments that are vectors, that is, somebody should be able to pass in any number of vectors into this data frame maker function that we're creating. But of course, they have to be of equal length. Uh, a data frame, in fact, a data frame, the columns of a data frame, I said it's a list, it is. The columns are analogous to components in lists, but unlike a list where the components can be different lengths, in a data frame, all the columns must be the same length. And uh, if you try and generate a data frame with vectors, which uh, become the columns of different lengths, you'll get an error. So that's a requirement. Now, that part is really pretty easy, just accepting any number of vectors. But I also asked that if they pass in less than two, it should self-generate the vectors. It should reject the vector the one vector that's submitted and instead because you're what you're doing is you're making a data frame out of a single vector in that case so if they, they they need to put in at least two they need to input at least two vectors and if they if they make a mistake and they don't or if they don't enter anything then it should just generate a a data frame that has somewhere between two and nine columns of different modes, different data types. So that's kind of a wrinkle to this, the requirements for this. Now, let's look at uh, the first part, which really is pretty easy. And we use a trick. We use uh, what is sometimes called the triple dot argument. Uh, triple dot, These it, this doesn't mean just dot, 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 like, et cetera, like you will see in, in text. This is an argument, a formal argument. It's an open-ended argument that will accept anything, any number of arguments. When you use a triple dot, and it can be used in conjunction with other defined formal arguments, or it can be used by itself like this, means the person can call this function, df.maker function, with, with anything as an argument. One, two, three, none, and... To simplify things, we're not doing any checking. We're not making sure that they're vectors at all. Otherwise, we'd be here for longer than 15 minutes, and that's the meter runs out at 15 minutes with, with YouTube. So what do we do? Well, it's really pretty simple, this part. Uh, you just you specify an open-ended formal argument list, just one argument, this triple dot, and then in the very next line, we use the data frame function to create a data, to create a data frame internal to the function. It's a local variable. This is a local variable within the scope of this function. And we just collect up whatever gets passed in and bind them, do a column bind, which binds them into a, into a structure where um, each vector is a different column. And then we make sure that it is a data frame by using the data frame function. And here, so this is the body. Here's the body of our function. It starts there and ends here. We also formally use the, we return that structure. We use the return statement to formally pass the data frame back out. Okay, so let's load that in. Um, now, you'll see up here, if we look in my workspace, I'm using RStudio, as you may know. Uh, we're starting to collect stuff. We're collecting variables from the previous 
functions that we ran and we actually we're going to use vector maker again and it's not that cluttered so we'll just leave this alone for now it really it's a good idea to clear out your workspace when you're writing functions particularly because uh, you sometimes you'll get conflicts with the names of variables but we'll, we'll leave it alone okay so let's load it up so we just simply highlight it this is how you do this how you load it in uh, our studio and we hit run and then you see it up here so there's our function it's in memory it's floating around in memory now we can call it okay well first of all we need some vectors we need, we need to make some vectors so uh, it should be we ought to be able to call it with any number of vectors so let's have some vectors so we create three vectors here x which is a a logical vector it's a vector of mode logical uh, where we have true false values y which is numeric and then z is character five and they're each five long so we'll just we'll execute those lines one at a time and you can see them populating our workspace up here so we do that and then we call our function df maker and sure enough binds them up there's our x vector, there's our y vector, there's our z vector. It gets returned because we told it to in the function return df. Note that a data frame, um, you can distinguish, you can look at the output and you can tell it's a data frame because you have row numbers, actually row names. A data frame is required to have row names. If you don't give it row names, it will just default. It'll assign numbers to the rows in sequential order, and that'll be their names unless until you give it a name. And um, you you can do that uh, with the the row names argument. Okay. So, well, what about the other part? What if they they call it with with no uh, arguments. Well, for the function we've created so far, it should still work. It will work. It'll just return an empty data frame. So let's do that. And you see what we get returned, data frame with zero columns, zero rows. But there is a structure. Okay, well, what about the second part? Um, if the number of vectors less than two self-generates two to nine vectors as columns of different modes. So what we need, we need first of all to test how many arguments get passed in. If it's more than two, if it's if it's two or more, we're fine. Actually, if it's one or more, this should be one. If there's one, if there's only one that gets passed in or none, we we don't want it returning a data frame with just one column, and we don't want it returning a data frame that's empty like we just did. So we have to test. Now we have a requirement to test how many arguments and to capture that number and then do one thing if the number is greater than two, bind them up and put them in the data frame and return it. And another thing if there's one, zero or one argument and that is to self-generate. So we need a branch. We need to use a control straight statement that will branch and we use an if. There's other ways we could do this, but we use an if else what about capturing the number of arguments? Well, um, here's a handy way to do that. And again, note we're using a list. Lists are handy. We're, we're first of all, we're creating a local variable within the uh, function, within the function itself, the scope of the function called data. And it's going to be a list. It's going to take whatever gets passed in and bind it, put it together as a list and put it here in data this variable local variable will only survive within the function as soon as the function's done it's gone okay and then we use the r native function length which normally what length does it counts the number of elements in a data structure but with a list because a list is comprised of components and then elements within a list it counts the number of components not the length of each component 
and we'll talk about the difference between components and elements in the in the next video in the list maker video so here n will capture how many arguments get passed in so now we can test n and branch if the oh, the first thing so the first thing we do is we uh, we, we can create a data frame so we bind them up into a data frame and we have that sitting there and then we test and if n is more than one that is if they did pass in two or more uh, uh, arguments vectors we just return that we return df which is the correct structure that we were to create but if they didn't then we need to do the random generation so what do we do? Well, we need a number for the columns to begin with. And I use my handy sample trick where I just sample a number from 2 to 9, and that's going to be our number of rows. And then uh, the data frame itself is actually created with this second uh, statement here in the else part of the if else statement. And I use replicate. Replicate. Uh, in this case we're passing two arguments to replicate how many times should it replicate and I'm calling remember my vector maker function I'm calling that to create the columns in this case five of them we could have made this a variable number but we didn't so if they if they don't pass in at least two this will this will create a vector that's five long. Let's do that, see if that works. Yeah, that'll work. And then this replicate will do it over and over again this many times. So those will be our columns, and then we'll just bind it up into a data frame. So let's give this a whirl, and then we return the data frame. Let's give this a whirl before the, the YouTube ometer expires okay so there's now we have uh, here are some vectors to test it with X is numeric Y is logical Z is character a is numeric also but they're real numbers they have uh, floating point precision and so we call uh, DF maker DF1 maker I may name this a different you can't have the same name function it would just overwrite it uh, you uh, you have to load it in though. Let's load it in. That's something I always forget to do. So let's load it in. R is an interpreted language. It's not compiled, but you have to load the instructions. Okay, and then so now we're going to create it. And sure enough, it it works. You call it with those uh, four vectors. Note the row. It's still in the same order. Uh, of the vectors that you pass in or you now if we call it with one it should do something else and it does if I call it with one over and over again you'll note it's randomly generating between two and nine columns and passing that out and it's giving them their own names that's another thing the columns must have names also in a data frame and the rows must have names and if you don't give it names it'll number the rows and it'll give its own names to the columns and it's not very clever about it x1 x2 x3 that's a characteristic of a data frame uh, what if you call it with nothing with no arguments will that work yeah sure does it does the same else statements up here it records this number it's different every time from the sample function and then it 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 will call vector maker as many times as we have here and in vec and bind that up so we see that we're getting every time if there's only one argument or, or no, no arguments we're getting random types in the columns and there are it's always between two and nine long. Okay, finally, uh, in the next video, we're going to look at list maker. A list is a more complex structure, as we'll see, but it's also fun, more fun, as we'll see also.